What's up guys? Thank you so much for all the love on the last video. It gives me a lot of lot of motivation to keep on going, keep on making new videos and keep on bringing you a new recipe. I really appreciate you guys doing that. Let's uh, for today's recipe, we're actually going to go out and make a simple recipe today. We're going to do dal tarka and jeera rice. Very, very comfort food. Um, everyone loves to eat dal tarka and jeera rice. So let's get to the recipe and uh, let's not waste any more of your time. Let's start making the food. All right, guys. So the first thing we're going to do for this recipe is we're actually going to add some ghee we're adding again just like the last video i'm gonna have everything in your uh, in the uh, link in description below but we are adding the ghee first um, whenever we're making dal tarka we want to make sure that we add enough ghee i like to add a lot of lot of the ghee the taste that the ghee gives you it's just a different taste um, it, it's an for me it just gives a different aroma to the dal so I am uh, I'm very generous with the ghee. As you know, for my food, I'm, um, I'm a big ghee and butter guy. So yeah, that's what I like making with it. So once the ghee is, uh, is hot, um, all I do is I add about one teaspoon of jeera. And as jeera is getting a little bit warm, I'm also gonna saute. Um, I have uh, garlic and uh, and ginger finely, finely, finely chopped. Uh, for this recipe, I like to use the fresh ginger and fresh garlic. If you want to, you can use the ginger garlic paste or ginger paste, garlic paste, totally up to you. For me, I like using the fresh garlic and fresh ginger. It has a different taste to it. Uh, just like last time I have chopped everything up, uh, for today's video, we're fine chopping everything uh, just because we are adding it into the dal. So it gives uh, when it's fine chopped, it doesn't, uh, you don't get those pieces in your mouth. So it gives you, um, <clears throat> it gives you a better taste to it. Now I'm gonna let the, let the garlic and, uh, and ginger get a little bit golden brown. And once it's golden brown, I'm gonna add chilies and onions to it. I have about two chilies in here. I'm gonna add one of them um, and I'm gonna save some for the jira rice. So in my jira rice, I like to use some chilies. Uh, you gotta have that street food spice to it, right? So I added about uh, one chili finely chopped, about half an onion finely chopped as well. Um, and again, saving some for the next, uh, for the, uh, for the next recipe. And we're going to golden fry the onions as well. This takes about about 30 seconds or so. I'm cooking everything on a high flame. Uh, so it doesn't take that much of a time. Uh, for me, again, I like to use a lot of ghee. So I'm going to add about two more spoons of ghee. Uh, the spoon I'm using it's very um, it's very tiny so it's like a tablespoon um, not the regular size spoon so no it's not gonna be fatty food just the regular food we're gonna be making so as I said I'm gonna add about two tablespoons that makes it one spoon of ghee again Now in my dal, I usually like to have tomatoes in them too. Um, it gives a little flavor to it, a little different taste to it. Uh, so I'm gonna add, I have about one fine chopped tomato, uh, actually two of them, two fine chopped tomatoes in there, or one big one. If you're using one big one like mine, then it's one tomato, or you can do two tomatoes, that would be fine as well. And we're just going to let it simmer a little bit, let it uh, grill up. We're going to golden fry it again. Um, 
The tomatoes, you need to fry them until you, uh, until the tomatoes start losing the moisture often. Um, once you start seeing the ghee coming back to the pan, then all you do is just add your spices and your dal is almost done after that. So. By the way, while I'm waiting on the tomatoes to simmer up, um, I would love to hear your feedback. I know uh, some of you guys already reached out to me, gave me a lot of feedback. Um, I appreciate you guys' feedback. Um, that was awesome. Keep them coming. Um, I definitely listen to you guys. I definitely make the improvements as you guys make suggestions to me. Um, so please keep them coming. I would love to hear from you guys. Um, write me notes tell me what you guys want me to do uh what i can do to improve and bring you guys better videos next time all right it's time to add our spices to it so for the dal i'm gonna use haldi powder about one tablespoon um, of haldi powder of course we're gonna use salt salt to taste i don't like very salty food so i use very little salt you guys can add salt to your taste even though it looked like i added salt three times but i'm just adding a pinch of it so yeah don't add it three times it's gonna be very salty <clears throat> Again, I'm using Kashmiri chili for the color, using about, about three tablespoons of it. It's, I can promise you, Kashmiri chili is not spicy, so it doesn't get spicy whatsoever. Um, dhania powder, using about half a tablespoon of dhania powder. And finally, I'm going to add... Just a pinch of garam masala. Oh, can you smell it? It already smells very, very yummy. Now once you add the masalas to your um, to your food, I usually like to add um, about two more tablespoons of ghee. Um, again, once the masalas are, are added, it gets very dry and it seems like the ghee is not there anymore. Um, when you make dal tarka, you want to have that, uh, that thari uh, um, that's on the the thurry that shows up on the dal so <clears throat> I like to have as much ghee as possible to have that curry showing now for my dal I actually have uh, two different dal that I've already boiled up um, I have uh, mung dal and I also have some of the tuber dal in there as well that's what I like to make my um, my uh, my dal third with and they're boiled, already good to go. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour everything into it. So as you can see, I haven't I haven't grinded my dal. You can see this, you can still see the big pieces of dal that's showing on there. Um, when you have the whole dal that's boiled like that, it just gives you a different taste to it. Um, <clears throat> now all we need to do is let the dal simmer for 5 minutes. Um, it should become one texture and that's about it and then your dal is going to be done. One last thing I'm going to add to the dal is some fresh lime. Um, again, I try to use as much of uh, fresh ingredients as I can. 
uh, for you um, if you're not able to find it or if you're in a location where you don't have a lot of the fresh stuff you can definitely use the uh, the lemon juice lime juice whatever that's available to you i'm using about half uh, lemon juice in there and uh, after that we're just gonna let it simmer for five minutes all right guys so it's been about five minutes i've let my dal simmer for about five minutes um one thing i forgot to tell you uh you need to make sure that you constantly keep on stirring the pot when you are um, when you're letting the dal uh, um dal boil up a little bit um <clears throat> The reason for that is if you're not stirring the pot, it would start sticking to the bottom of the pot. So please make sure, even if you're using nonstick, make sure you keep on uh, stirring the pot. I like to make sure that uh, for some things like dal and stuff, I like to use the traditional um, Indian cookware just to make sure it does have that little different taste to it. So now the dal is almost done. Um, as you can see, um, as you can see the ghee that's coming on the top of the dal, that just gives a different flavor. It gives the different richness to the dal. The only thing left to add to the dal, any dal is incomplete without some freshly chopped dhania. So we're going to add the dhania for it. And last thing I'm going to add on top of that is my love. And that's going to be some... Indian Amul butter and again this is just for the garnishing uh, you don't have to add it if you don't want to but for me Amul butter it's always 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 there all right guys so now we're gonna make the second recipe uh, for today which is the easiest one ever we're gonna make some jeera rice. It goes the base with the uh, with the dal tarka. It's very very easy. I have about uh, two big spoon of ghee in here. I already pre warmed the pan, added some ghee to it. Since it's called jeera rice, yes, we're gonna be generous with ghee and generous with jeera. So I'm adding about two tablespoons of jeera in here. You want to make sure when you are uh, sauteing the jeera, um, jeera it's actually by the way cumin seeds, okay? Um, one of you guys made a suggestion that I should be using, uh, uh, I should be using our Indian spices name. Um, so I'm just using the Indian spices name, but for all my non-Indian friends that has liked and subscribed, jeera it's is cumin seed. And again, I'm going to have all the, um, all the ingredients in the description as well. <clears throat> So you want to make sure that jeera just gets a little bit brown and once the jeera is brown all you need to do is add some chilies to it and add some onions to it. So for this recipe, we're not going to golden fry the onions. Um, I like to make sure that it's not too uh, too grilled or not too fried when I'm frying the onions for jeera rice. I leave it half done. So it doesn't have the rawness to it, but it's not uh, deep fried as well or it's not golden fried as well. Now, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add some more ghee and you guessed it completely right. So I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of ghee again. I don't know if you ever had jeera rice or not, but anytime you make jeera rice, it has it has that feeling, that richness of uh, of the rice. It has a lot of lot of you feel that it has a lot of lot of ghee to it. <clears throat> Now I have uh, boiled up some rice, I have steam, uh, steam cooked the rice. Uh, the rice is about, I made sure that they're about 80% done. I don't like to uh, cook the rice 100% since we're going to cook it in the, um, in the pan as well. If you have 100% 100 cooked rice, the rice would actually, uh, it would start breaking on you. So I have about 80% cooked rice, I'm using basmati rice. Um, all you need to do at this point 
go ahead and add your rice to the pan. And you give it a good mix. Now while I'm stirring the rice, there is one more thing I'm going to add to it um, and that's going to be some more dhania. Dhania is coriander by the way. Um, so I'm adding, be generous with your dhania, I like to add a lot of lot of coriander leaves. Um, and again that's just going to give it a different taste, different uh, taste to your tongue. I'm going to use about quarter of a lemon. Um, Again, I'm using freshly uh, fresh lemon. You can use the lemon juice, lime juice, whatever is available to you. Again, you want to make sure that you keep stirring the rice. You want to make sure that it doesn't stick to the pot on the bottom. And then the last thing again that we're going to add to the rice is going to be amul butter and a good chunk of amul butter in there and that's about it and that's that's it with your jira rice your jira rice is done as well as i say today's recipe is our comfort food recipe very very easy you can make it in less than 10 minutes or so if you have everything ready pre-chopped um, lazy food this is this is again an example of a lazy food doesn't take you too long to make it and you could be done in few minutes so again guys um, thank you so much for watching the video please don't forget to like and subscribe um, it helps me out bring you guys it gives me a lot of motivation to bring you guys more and more videos more and more recipe so please like, subscribe and spread the word around. Again, thank you so much for the likes on the last video. And until next time, I'll see you guys soon. Let me know what you guys want to see in the next video. Again, the food is ready. I'm not waiting on you. I'll see you soon.